Hi everybody. Today we are talking about 10 things people wish they knew before they were diagnosed with a health condition. This applies whether you are a person with a health condition who takes care of yourself, or maybe you are a caregiver who has a health condition, or maybe you're a person with a health condition who has a caregiver. <laughs> Because the roles and responsibilities of being a caregiver, which you probably know, can result in illness or sickness from all of the stress involved in caring for others. There's also a lot of stress that people with diagnosed health conditions experience. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today as I share these 10 things that people with health conditions wish they knew before they were diagnosed. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. I am a caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker. Please do click below, like this video, follow this channel, and comment so that other people seeking hope, help, and support can find their way here to my YouTube channel. You can also visit my website. It's PamelaDWilson.com. There you'll find a lot of helpful information and three programs for one, how to care for aging parents, two, insights into appointing or becoming an agent under power of attorney, and then one program about how to become a guardian of an older adult if that becomes necessary. And so below in the section is a link to my website and these three programs. So number 10, or number one of 10, for things people wish they knew before they were diagnosed with a health condition, it's to learn as much about the condition as possible. So let's say that maybe your parents, mom and dad, have some health conditions that they're dealing with and you're their caregiver. Learn about those because those may be something that run in your family. So that if you are diagnosed, you already kind of have a head start in learning about all of this. Because this is your health. You only have one body in this lifetime. And whatever this condition is that you are diagnosed with, it can have really short-term and long-term effects if you're not attentive to learning how to manage it. Learn about the pros and the cons of treatments. We'll talk about this. Learn about the short and the long-term consequences. Because if you just brush off this diagnosis and say, oh, well, you know, it's not important. I'm not going to pay attention to it. You know, when it really bothers me, then I'll pay attention to it. Well, if you ignore it, by the time it really bothers you, it probably has turned into one more, if not two more, health conditions. So these are questions that you must ask your doctors about the pros and the cons of care, the consequences. More than likely, because they are so rushed, they're not gonna volunteer the information because they're under time constraints. Or they think that you may know about the condition because you're not asking questions. Doctors are busy people, let's be honest. They are rushed to see patient after patient after patient. And it's not that they don't care. They need to know that you care and that you're interested in learning more about your health conditions and then they will help you. Also take your health conditions seriously. Things like high blood pressure and diabetes in the very early stages may not have any obvious signs. You may go to your doctor for a checkup one year and they do blood work and they take your blood pressure and they're like, oh my gosh, you've got some conditions here that we need to talk about. These conditions that are not obvious can lead eventually, if they're untreated, to major, major issues like more heart disease, stroke, kidney disease, circulatory disorders, skin conditions, and a whole lot more. So the only way that you can change the course of a health condition is to catch it early when you can still do something about it. So how do you do this? Simple. It means going to a doctor for an annual checkup and blood work, even if you don't think you need it, even if you think you feel okay because it's much less expensive and emotionally distressing to identify a condition that can be treated early in the process rather than being diagnosed later when there's a lot more complications. Or if you're watching this, maybe you already have a diagnosis and something serious has happened that made you see the doctor. This leads us right into number two of the 10 things people they knew 
before or at the time they are diagnosed with a health condition. So when there is a diagnosis, the doctors are kind of looking in their bag of tricks for solutions, right? So the first thing that the doctor might think of is, well, you know what, let's talk about medications. I'm going to write you a prescription. Well, the question you as the patient want to ask is, is there anything I can do to change this health condition that doesn't require medications? Because what you may not know is one pill can lead to the need for another pill and another and another. So stay tuned. We're going to talk about this in a minute. The other very important thing is when you're dealing with doctors, your outlook on health and the way that you participate affects the way that doctors offer you care and treatments. If you're physically active and you want to remain that way and you talk to your doctor about that, a doctor may treat you very differently from somebody who appears to be overweight and who's not really interested in changing their habits. They say, oh yeah, I'll take that pill. If that's what it's going to do, I'll take the pill. I'm not going to change any of my habits. I don't want to change my life, right? Well, here's an example of how this plays out when we get older. So older adult breaks a hip falls, right? An active older adult who still hikes and bikes and skis and plays golf, it's probably going to be a candidate for a full hip replacement. Somebody in the middle there who isn't really active, who says, Doc, you know, I don't do anything. I sit and I watch TV most of the time. Well, they're probably not going to get the full hip replacement. They may only get partial treatment for that. And somebody who is totally inactive, let's say that your parents in a wheelchair, they may not even do surgery at all all because surgery for older adults is serious. It's not like having surgery when you're 20 or 30 and you recover like that, right? If you are not in good physical and mental condition before surgery, you're not going to be in better physical or mental condition after the surgery. In either circumstance, you're in good shape, you're in bad shape. You have a lot of work to do to recover and to return to your prior physical abilities. Surgery for older adults is not a cakewalk, okay? You gotta be very practical about it and know that it's gonna involve work. Other things you wanna know. Research confirms that bias does exist against older adults based on their age and their appearance. 65, 75, 85, 90. Doctors are more likely to put more effort into a younger, older person who has more opportunity to recover than what they see as somebody who is old and frail and who has a lot of health conditions. And I say that very kindly because if you are old and frail and you have a lot of health conditions and you're not committed to do what it takes to recover, you're probably not going to recover. Your health is going to continue on this downhill path. So you have to be really honest with yourself about what you're willing to do and not do and how much you're willing to participate in your health care and your medical care. So on the other hand, you may be a person who looks 10 years or 20 years younger than your age. If so, you're obviously doing something right. It is really sad to say that appearance does make a difference in the way that you are treated by medical providers, but it does. The other thing in addition to all of this is your approach, your demeanor, the way you treat other people also makes a difference. Being kind and patient and understanding is very much appreciated by healthcare providers these days. So is your participation because you may not know, but patient to Healthcare provider violence is escalating. It's happening every day all over the world. So if you're frustrated or you're angry with a physician or a medical care provider, it's better to approach the subject in a methodical and logical, unemotional manner by providing factual information. Research confirms that women patients can be viewed as very emotional and hysterical and making things up. So by understanding all these things and working with your doctor and advocating for yourself or a loved one, you will get better treatment. Number three of 10 things people wish they knew is that 
Doctors lump patients into averages. You're 50 years old, you're 60 years old, you're 20 years old, you're going to be like all these other people. So a couple minutes ago we were talking about changing health habits versus taking medicines. So let's say that you're prescribed a medication. The doctor, only if you ask, might mention the side effects, right, that most people experience. However, you may not be most people. You may be a little different. And you might experience side effects that nobody told you about. And you don't realize that the medication is causing these problems. Maybe you're getting headaches, or you feel nauseated, or you have pain in your legs, or you don't sleep at night. I can tell you that most clinical trials to approve drugs are done on men. So if you're female, you can have different side effects. Some people don't experience any side effects from medications, while others experience a lot of side effects. So what you want to be careful about is experiencing side effects that you didn't ask about or nobody told you about, and you're not sure if they're side effects or not. And then you talk to your doctor, and your doctor's like, well, we'll just give you this pill and that'll take care of that side effect, right? And then it's another and another and another until you're taking a whole handful of medications to counteract the side effects from the medications that you were taking to help with a condition that caused more side effects. So when you think about it, the more you implement habit changes to improve your health, the better off you are because then you're not taking one medication after another. Number four of 10 things people wish they knew before they were diagnosed with a health condition is patients lie. I have heard doctors say this so many times, well, we don't know if patients are telling us the truth. We don't know if patients are lying. Why do they automatically assume patients lie? Well, because they probably do. So here's the deal. If you wanna be seen as a patient who is honest and you wanna be taken seriously, start a daily notebook, get a spiral notebook that you keep. Document the way you feel as a result of a health diagnosis or the prescription of a new medication or if a medication is discontinued. Document daily changes, symptoms, good day, bad day, I'm feeling well, I'm not feeling good, how you felt after you took a medication. And also, if you do not trust your doctor or feel that it's a good match, make a change. Most health insurance companies pay for a second opinion from another doctor. Pick up the phone, call your insurance company and say, hey, am I allowed to get a second opinion? I feel like I'm going to a doctor who's not a good match and they don't understand me and they're not a good fit. So check to see if your health insurance has this second opinion benefit. Then comparison shop doctors, like you would comparison shop at the grocery store or another store. You don't have to accept a doctor who you do not feel is a good personality fit. Next up, number five of the 10 things people wish they knew before or after they were diagnosed with a health condition. Just like doctors say patients lie to us, patients don't trust their doctors. Is that not a shocker? Why? Because there's a perception that healthcare systems are focused on making money and that's all they care about. They don't really care about people or patients, especially if your doctor doesn't take time with you, right? In a sense, healthcare systems do need to make money, right? They have to remain profitable to provide services. However, there's a lot of areas where one might wonder because health insurance companies make money when they deny patient claims, when they deny a prescription medication, when they deny or delay a treatment that can be life-saving. I know a lot of caregivers who are denied treatments or delayed treatments for medications, for cancer treatments, and their health gets worse, and then it really is a bad situation. There are a lot of constraints of the healthcare system. Doctors are rushed to see patients in less than 15 minutes one after the other after the other, and they really don't have time to learn about you, to talk to you, so it's up to you to know that you've got 15 minutes and to make the best use of that time. On my website, there is an article called 15, 15, 15. It's about how to make the best time at a patient appointment. There's a lot of details there. But the short and skinny of it is, a doctor appointment is not a social visit. 
It's not a social hour where you go and you want to know how the doctor is and you want to tell the doctor everything that's going on in your life. A doctor appointment, zip it up. It's the time to have a serious, brief talk about your health, to bring your notebook, to talk about what's going on, what's happening day to day, and talk about the problem that needs to be solved. Now, you might feel like you need more time because your questions are not answered in that 15 minutes. If so, ask if there is a nurse or a social worker or somebody else in that doctor's office who can help you. If you're over 65, here are some tips. Medicare offers a chronic care management coordination benefit. So if you have two or more of these health conditions, high blood pressure, diabetes, high blood pressure, arthritis, high blood pressure, stomach problems, breathing problems, right? Two or more. Ask your doctor about this chronic health coordination benefit because it offers more support and care outside of your regular medical visit. Also, once a year, if you're over 65 and you have Medicare, you're eligible for a Medicare annual visit and an advanced care planning visit. These visits can go up to one hour. Longer visits. You can talk to your doctor about a lot of things. If your doctor doesn't mention these, ask for them and schedule them. You are entitled to these benefits. Number six of 10 things people wish they knew before they were diagnosed or have a health condition is that patients, right, don't always follow up with care. You don't always follow up with care because why? You got too much going on. You got competing priorities. Maybe you're a caregiver for somebody else, or maybe it's because you're worried you can't afford to go to the doctor because you got to pay a copay, or they're going to prescribe prescriptions that you're not going to be able to afford. So what do you do? Do you pay your groceries or your utility bill or your rent, or do you go see the doctor? Here's what you do. If you're financially strapped, if you don't have the money, Tell your doctor's office, I want to come to an appointment, but I don't know that I can afford the copay. You would be surprised the programs out there that can help pay for some of these expenses if you truly are low income. Because the lower income you are, the more economic impact these copays have, right? The more these prescription drug expenses hit your budget, the more you experience financial stress. So you've got to ask about programs for this. Having health insurance is one thing, using it is another. Learn how to use your health insurance benefits to your benefit. Learn about covered preventative treatments, routine visits, vaccinations, so that you can invest in being healthy. You only have one body. And trust me, you will thank yourself 10, 20, or 30 years down the road that you took these actions because you'll still be healthy while your friends and everybody else, you'll be watching them experience a lot of health conditions if they were not proactive earlier in life. Number seven out of 10 of what people wish they knew before they were diagnosed with health conditions or right after. Managing these health problems, also called chronic diseases by the healthcare system, can feel like being on an up and down roller coaster you might have good days and bad days where one day you feel great, the next day you can barely get out of bed. There's going to be days when you feel energetic. There's going to be days when you fall asleep in bed at 6 o'clock and sleep for 12 hours. Finding this middle ground, managing your health condition between doing too much and too little, will help you find balance. Additionally, there can be other things that happen, right? You're taking a medication and certain foods upset your stomach or they result in you not feeling well. Things like gluten, dairy, soy, yeast, drinking alcohol, eating processed foods. You might have a more sensitive stomach, or you might be more sensitive to smells like perfumes or cleaning products, or even the smell of food might make you just woo, be nauseated, right? This is why it's important to learn about your health conditions, access your health information on your doctor's online portal so that you're well informed and you can send them a note if you're having a bad day, right? This also allows you to make sure, believe it or not, that your health information is correct. Yes, this is your responsibility. Because look, with all the information online today, it's easy for information to get mixed up or information to be incorrect or it's input incorrectly and there's these mistakes and then your doctor's relying off these bad information to treat you. You have to make sure that you are in control of your online health information and it's accurate.
and up to date. Number eight of the 10 things people wish they knew before they were diagnosed with a health condition or after. Health conditions can affect your ability to perform daily activities. So if you're an older adult and you have one or more multiple health conditions, simple things like taking a shower or a bath may be exhausting. You might feel like taking a nap in the middle of the day. If you can, do it, right? Standing up to make a meal may be very tiring. Yard work you used to do may be too much. Leaving home to go to the grocery store or socializing may be a substantial effort to get yourself out of the house to go do something. Or maybe if you're still working, right, and you have to take a day off work or you work remotely and you know you're not your best, having a sick day is not like a vacation, right? You don't feel well. Not feeling well, let's be honest, it's the pits, right? Number nine of the 10 things people wish they knew before they were diagnosed with a health condition. These chronic diseases, these health conditions, heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, breathing problems, cancer, they affect your emotions and your emotional outlook. I know some people who spend all their time worrying about their health conditions or up upcoming treatments, right? Worry is not good for your health. Or people who are afraid of going back to see the doctor because you don't want bad news, so you delay the appointment and then something happens and then you get bad news, right? It's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Maybe you've been hospitalized and it was really, really hard on you and you don't want to speak up that you don't feel well because you don't want to go back to the hospital. Maybe your health is affecting your ability to work and financially support your family, so you're worried about that. There's so many worries that happen from health concerns, but the more informed you are, the more proactive, the better able you will be to manage all of this craziness that's gonna to happen to all of us someday, right? Nobody is immune from health problems. We all die from something. If it's not an unexpected accident, it's probably a health problem. Number 10, of the 10 things people wish they knew before they were diagnosed with a health condition. Manage your emotions, your fears, and your worries by being as factual and objective and proactive and detail-oriented as possible. If you are still here watching this video, give yourself credit. That's probably you. Then what you have to do is you have to find or create mental and physical distractions and healthy hobbies to help you manage the balance between feeling emotional about your health and feeling positive about your health. It's better to feel positive, right? Simple things, listening to music, working on a scrapbook, woodworking hobbies, your car in the garage, whatever it is. Commit to something every day and manage your health system, your health conditions, right? So maybe you're gonna exercise or take a walk because you know this is good for your health or maybe you're gonna eat healthier. So in addition to these fun things that you're doing, do one thing that's like, oh, I don't want to exercise today, or I know I should eat some fruit today, but I don't want to do that, right? Do the things that you don't want to do that are good for you, and then they'll become a habit, and then they'll be easier to do. Honestly, it takes a lot of physical and psychological and emotional effort and strength to successfully manage your health and chronic disease, plus everything else you have going on in your life. Your work, you're going to school, you're married, you got kids, you got relationships, you have social stuff going on, you're a caregiver. It takes a lot of work to do this. So if you are a person who needs help from others, caregivers, be kind and appreciative to your caregivers. If you're a caregiver who's perfectly healthy, taking care of somebody who's sick, understand that that is no picnic and be empathetic even if you cannot understand. Being a person with an illness or being a caregiver Neither side is easy. Both sides are stressful, physically demanding, emotionally demanding. Do your best to work together. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. I thank you so much for being here. I'm a caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker. Please do click this video below. Check that you like it. Follow my YouTube channel comment. It helps other people find their way here. And go over, visit my website, PamelaDWilson.com. There's some links below where you can find my online courses, my book, my podcast, and my Facebook private caregiver group. I would love to see you there. Thanks for being here. I look forward to seeing you all again soon in another video or in a webinar.
Have a great day.